everybody and welcome back to adobe live we are here for some more fun and to learn some skill and techniques with the amazing andreas andreas thank you so much for joining us thank you for having me <laughs> so we are here with uh so many amazing people that are already uh in the chat i can see so many familiar faces already saying hello ariana christelle steve ciao nice to see you and before we get started uh, with this amazing stream with andres that is going to be creating a magazine featuring some graffiti and if you guys know me you know i love graffiti if you don't know me by the way i'm claddy and i'm here just hosting and i'm going to be here reading the questions in the chat. I want to remind everybody if you missed the creative challenge with the lovely Andrew Ocrado to tune in on behance.net slash live, uh, sorry, <laughs> behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. And from here, you're going to be able to take the challenges every single day, learning new techniques in Adobe Illustrator. And all you have to do is to scroll down and you'll be able to watch the replays and also get the starter file. So if you miss the stream, don't forget that you can always tune in back into the creative challenge to follow along with Andrew Ock Rattle. Also, if you're watching from YouTube, remember joining on behance.net slash live because that's the place where I can read your questions. If you have any question while Andres is working, I'm gonna be here looking at the chat and uh, asking the question to Andres. So Andres, I'm going to, I'm already apologizing because I'm going to be yeah. interrupting your, your no, workflow, okay. <laughs> but I'm super excited to learn more about what you do. So why don't you show us some of your work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, real quick intro though is um, I'm a designer and art director based out of Santa Barbara, California. Um, I want to say I've been designing for like six years. Uh, I actually started a design studio named AND2ES. Um, it's my name with a two as, as an R and um. Yeah, over the course of the past six years, I've just really gotten into streetwear and just um, editorial work. And this is some of my work. I mean, just real quick, uh, some work right here. I'm a really minimal guy. And yeah, we're gonna be doing, today we're gonna be doing something similar, a zine. And it's gonna be based on an artist I really respect. His name is Cause, or AKA Brian Donnelly. And he's just super cool because he started off doing graffiti. Cloudy, obviously, you do graffiti too. And it's like, <laughs> there's like a thrill in it. But um, there's and also, a, you, yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to know, like, how did you get that? Like, why did you pick him? I chose him because, so he's a kid from Jersey. And like, he did an interview with Complex a few years back. And I watched it. It was so intriguing because he was telling his story. And he was saying how he used to do, um, in a bus stop, there's like a, there's usually advertisements that are next to the bus seat. And he would go there and like lift up the glass and take the, the art piece home or the advertisement home. And he would draw on it and he'd put it back inside the, inside the, um, the glass. And he would, I don't know, I thought that was so cool because he was being a little bit on the, um, like he was breaking the rules a bit. And I kind of like when artists break the rules because it's kind of like, I don't know. It's it's a cool thing to do, and I think it's okay in certain in certain circumstances. But yeah, um, I think I'm gonna be that, doing yeah. Yeah, sorry, I was just saying. I think that's a like a little bit of the feeling with the street art, like making yeah. an impact yeah. and bringing a little bit of of sh sharing your sharing yourself yeah with, uh, with the environment so i'm so excited that that yeah. you picked this theme. I can wait to to see what we're gonna be creating. Yeah. So. Um, I'm gonna start off on InDesign. We're gonna be doing a little bit of type exploration on InDesign. I'm not gonna be here for too long, but this is kind of what I do for conceptual pieces. Um, let's see. And this cause. And the sizing isn't really too important because I'm gonna be mocking this up, so it doesn't really matter. Mm. 
by the way, Andres, I want to remind yeah. you that we have an amazing audience that really likes to get involved. And also yeah. we have the lovely uh, Voodoo Val in the chat. And me and Val, during the, this uh, fun Adobe Live, we like to do polls to, to huh. get people to participate. So if at yeah. any point, if you feel like maybe you want to pick between like, I don't know, a typeface or a uh -huh. color, yeah. we can pass the question to the audience and make, uh -huh. make a poll and get everyone to participate in, in okay. your project okay. if you feel yeah. like it. No, Today, I, tomorrow, I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Oh, they'll help me out. <laughs> um, I'm going to start off the way I usually start off with projects with our zines. I don't really mess with the cover too much. I'm going to actually go into the second spread. I'm just going to do the subheaders. I think that's like something I just do. I like to have an idea of what the, the layout of just every single page is going to be looking like. Um, this is just kind of info that I'm just going to choose, not really anything. But yeah, we're trying to choose different or important topics, just like any other zine. They usually have a the just the breakdown of what the magazine is going to be about. Andres, and sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. um, would you mind please, like, yeah, perfect. Sorry, I just saw it up in late. My bad. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask again <laughs> to do to do yeah. full screen. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also like, now that I'm like designing this in live, do people normally like, do you name your layers or do you not really name your layers? Yeah, let us know, let us know in the chat. Do you name your layers or you do not name your layers? I'm a, I'm a big um, name your layers kind of person, yeah. but it does depend on the amount of time that I have. So huh. uh, I always say it gets ugly before it gets pretty. Yeah. So it usually gets messy and then I tidy it up. What about yeah. you? I'm really like unorthodox. I don't name anything. Like my files are all messed up most of the time. I um, But I'm going to try to be genuine. I don't want to like, because I was thinking to myself before this live had started, I was like, should I just start doing things that I don't normally do just because I want to like look better? And I'm like, nah. No, <laughs> no, we want to, we want the real deal. Yeah. Um, that's the beauty of the live. And, and that's what I say, like all the time, Andres, like Adobe yeah. live is such a safe space to learn together. There is yeah. no right or wrong way of, of using the apps. The beauty, yeah. I mean, I've been here around for a little bit and I've seen huh. so many amazing artists from all over the world. And yeah. what I notice is that everyone does things differently, but that's the yeah. beauty of it. So yeah. do yourself, be yourself. We're here to learn what the way you do it, you know? Yeah, I think that's important. Um, and I've actually learned a lot of, um, a lot of people have showed me shortcuts on the live streams, which I've never even like thought of doing. And I find it so like, it's it's good because then you kind of get an idea of how people do things. And if there's a faster way of doing something you learn and then you kind of just apply it on your own. Totally. And we have a question in the chat. Let me head back to see. So everyone is like oh, to name or not to name. <laughs> we have yeah. wait, up, <laughs> wait in the chat to name or not yeah. to name. So at the moment, the majority is a good, good behaved designer that they name, name there. We have Uriel Umacron saying uh, name them, name them. Ariana say no name layers unless sharing files, which makes sense. Uh -huh. And we have a question from Uriel as well. Okay. So is this just for digital or for print? So this is going to be digital only. This is my process of doing a digital piece, like a digital conceptual piece. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, um, if it were to be print, I would take different steps. I would only work on InDesign up until, and I would follow the guidelines and the margins and everything that the printer would require. But since it's, print, since it's going to be digital, I'm going to just mess around here on InDesign and then obviously just start mocking it up on Photoshop for the rest of the stream. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be yeah. jumping on in Photoshop pretty yeah, soon. Yes, soon. I'm just so, kind of... Andres, you brought like a very big uh, dilemma here with the name yeah. or not Renee. <laughs> uh -huh. like... No, yeah, I think about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Steve saying, I mostly work with a team. So unless you love getting lots of phone calls, texts oh. and emails. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. Have you worked uh, as a freelance uh, for a long time? Or yeah, what I've actually freelanced for a long time for the for like the past five years. Um, and I've never worked in 
in an agency. So that's probably why I still have a, a lot of bad habits because I don't work with teams, which I think in the future I'm open to, but right now I've been doing, I'm doing okay. So I'm, I'm just doing what I need to do as far as all my freelance work. Well, that's the beauty of the freelancing. Yeah. <laughs> Creating no, your yeah. own way. Have you worked on a, in an agency before, Clay? I had a very, very wild experience. I was telling you a little bit about behind the scene. Um, yeah. I come, um, I've not studied as a designer. I come from okay. a very, very weird background. So walls were my practice. You know, I created my first typefaces by yeah. just drawing it on a wall. Uh -huh. And then, and then, and you know, we were talking about multimedia. So yeah. I, I actually created a, a piece on a wall, which I then translated on a laser cut installation. It was okay. all about perception because I'm dyslexic. Okay. So um, I created all these letters made out of shapes and then I created this uh, cut out out of perspex. And then yeah. I learned how to use Illustrator because I wanted to trace them. So yeah. that's how I got to Illustrator. But <laughs> yeah. um, I was working in PR and uh -huh. that's the only time that I had agency experience was being a PR and had to prepare a press release and worrying about colors, uh -huh. you know, when nobody cared. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky that I always say graphic design saved my life. Yeah, no, that's super cool. I think um, what we were talking about earlier about graffiti there's like a thrill aspect to just I don't know if it's more knowing you're breaking the rules a little bit or just kind of like the instant feeling that people are going to see your work in a in like a physical form I don't know one of those two I think is I think it's interesting Andres, cool. you are like making my heart <laughs> like, like really <laughs> yeah. there is the excitement of run like the amount of time that I've been running with the cans on my on my backpack because usually you get like the spray cans that yeah. make, when they're empty they're very loud you know they have yeah. they make they're very loud so usually after yeah after you finish a piece you just want to get out of there and just <laughs> run and so there is this uh this noise that kind of yeah. joins the run but always uh -huh. I remember just sitting and maybe taking some trains or some metro links so you can uh -huh. either go through and see your piece while you're traveling and i, I always yeah. try to do it in a in a position where it's like somewhere around my commute you know uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah. i could see it or when the train is going somewhere you can call your uh -huh. friends but yeah. all good times <laughs> uh-huh no for sure i'm like i'm gonna look into doing something in um like in a, like a, a space that's like you you're allowed to in the beginning and then i'll i'll see if i can make a piece out and then i don't know We'll see. And start by your boards. Like I, I yeah. by all means, I mean you're showing you're showing great talented graffiti artists. I don't like to yeah. name myself a graffiti artist because uh -huh. I, I I will take out all the greatness out of the real graffiti artists. Yeah. I just enjoy walls like big canvases. To me, like it's just a big canvas. Yeah. And my biggest uh advice for everyone who wants to start is just like, you know, get a board, like even if it's yeah. plywood. Mm -hmm. or like you know maybe some a little bit more thicker paper and get out in your yeah. garden and and practice and you, you people love it people, it got me like i i got really good design gigs out of it yeah. just because i was uh in cafes painting and people uh -huh. it's a conversation started you know yeah no it is it is um so we have a question from from val aside from okay. designer you mentioned who yeah. are your design idols design idols i would say um i'm really inspired by people i don't they don't necessarily have to be designers they just have to be creatives i think um there's certain people that have started big streetwear brands there's also people on behance that are really inspiring to me just with the work that they do but to put some names out there i would say um virgil abloh he's the founder of off-white the streetwear brand i think he's super inspiring just the way he does certain things and just his take on a lot of art, I think that's really cool. There's also a ton of um, a ton of yeah, I don't know. I think there's there's Virgil Abloh, there's James Jabaya. He's the the owner of Supreme. He's also super. His story is interesting. I'm so intrigued by stories. I think um, just the way things go about and how like if there's a person like if anything, I, I think I enjoy hearing people's background and hearing how they became to be. I think that's the most interesting thing. Before anything, I think 
yeah, just listening into how like Virgil started off and all the failed, failed um, companies he had started and just his whole back and forth with, with the media and saying he he's kind of copying or he's reappropriating. I think it's it's interesting. But yeah, Virgil Abloh for sure. Totally. I think yeah. story I think there's so much more coming out of failures than mm -hmm. you know and, and life experiences that yeah. makes a difference. And and that's what I I, I mean I, I know it, it's, it's a long stretch, but that's what I love about Adobe Live because uh -huh. you know the amount of time like I hope everything works great for you, you know. But the yeah. amount of time that like things like either didn't uh -huh. work for me or I thought I was doing yeah. something else or I forgot or uh -huh. you know, but that's life. That's the life of a yeah. designer. It's mm -hmm. not perfect. Things are not already mocked up. I always say it gets ugly before it gets pretty. Learning together at Adobe Live, sharing the real, the real, <laughs> the real life yeah. of a designer. No, yeah, I think um, as a designer, you have to be willing to fail a ton and just be be open to criticism and just, just put yourself out there because that's the only way you'll be able to grow and learn and just grow as a designer in general. Totally. And do you mind telling us a little because you were saying like that you love the the be like the stories how people get to do what they do. What about yeah. you? How did you get to? to My story is interesting because um, I've always had like some confidence in just me designing, even when I was bad. Like I tell this to everyone. I'm like I thought I was the best designer when I wasn't a good designer. I was awful, but I had I was just in my head saying I'm so good. I'm there's um. There's no one better than me. I'm doing like, this is perfect. Like I wasn't taking criticism, which was bad because at the time you have to take criticism to grow and to like listen to other people that are more experienced and you have to be able to take criticism. But I was always really de delusional in that sense. And and I, I kept going about that. I kept just learning and just trying to become better. But I moved to New York City a few, like three years ago, I would say. I think it's three years ago. And you know, New York, you lived in New York, right, Clyde? Yeah, I've been there for a bit. Yeah. So New York is 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 cool because there's so many people. You'll you'll learn you'll meet so many people that are trying to make in absolutely everything. There you'll meet artists, you're gonna meet um dancers, you're gonna meet people that wanna be actors, you're gonna meet photographers, you're gonna meet every type of person in the world in New York. And it's all over the world too. Like everyone from all over the world moves to New York City because that's the city where people make it. And um there is there the the fight and the the determination and just the the mindset people have over there which is just work hard and get it done and you, you're gonna be competing it's a fight over there so i met so many people that were really interesting and really inspiring and had really big dreams which was really inspiring for me because i had the same amount of big dreams and but the only thing is i lacked the the talent i lacked the the design like there's for applying for a job over there, you're, you're competing with hundreds of applicants. And obviously now in retrospect, I know that I wasn't that good of a, I wasn't as talented as a designer. So I didn't get jobs, but it taught me a lot. And I met a whole lot of people and I just kind of showed that you have to work hard. You like, there's no, there's no shortcuts in life, especially with design and with any type of career you want to do. You have to work hard and you got to, you got to continue to learn and just just not give up, I guess. But yeah, yeah, then, that was it. I was just yeah. waiting for you to say it. Don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm interested in hearing any like if anyone in the chat has any have a, has ever had like a, a moment of like, oh, shoot, this is like a, a rough moment, but you kind of persevered and you and you continued if it's design, if it's any other medium. I think that's I think that's a fantastic question, and I yeah. want to say hi to Merv and Viola and everybody else that Theo that is joining. Bruce is saying um, it was giving a shout out to New York, yes, yes city of dreams, and and yeah, I I totally want to echo the question that Andres was making. You know, tell us about your experience, about your failures, but you know, another word that really came to my mind when you were um, talking about your experience is passion. Uh -huh yeah you know to me that's you know follow your passions and for my personal experience as well i i i gained a lot of jobs by creating a book 
and I'll, just just to put out my illustrations. Yeah. And I never done illustrations for my job because I do like very commercial work, you know. Yeah. So I just done, you know what? Like I'm sick and tired. I want to do illustration. I want to illustrate. Mm -hmm. I done a, an illustration book and that really, really worked really, really well. So yeah. I completely, completely agree with everything you say. And I think you, Paco is always say very well said, Andres. Yes. <laughs> Don't yeah. give up and, and keep at it. Val is saying, yeah, totally. Val, share, share, share your story with us. We're all about stories today. Yeah. We want to hear your stories. The upbringing and just what everything came, like how everything came to be. I think it's super interesting. And I hear a lot of people here, Andres, um, huh. that watch the stream, they usually message me then in private saying, mm -hmm. um, you know, that maybe even now or in the past, they, they dream to do our job and yeah. they're, they're, they're still, you know, trying their best, even if maybe they're doing something else. And yeah. probably I think that's that's the beauty of, of sharing, you know, no matter what your, your workflow is, but sharing that the way that you get it done, I think it inspires people not to give up. Yeah, I think um, it makes it more, you can kind of understand and just, I don't know where, everyone comes from different places. So if you hear someone that's coming from a similar place that you're coming from, then you feel more motivated to do what they're doing or whatever you want to pursue. So we have a, we have a few questions in the chat. So okay. um, I'm going to start with the first one. Analo is asking, what was the first thing you illustrated? Um, you know what? I, I started illustrating artists, like musicians, and I would take a little twist and I would go on Illustrator, right? And I would, first I would find a picture that I liked from them, and then I would lower the opacity and obviously trace it. But then I would twist it by like not drawing in their eyes. First, because I didn't, I, I wasn't good at drawing in eyes. But second, because I, I thought it'd be interesting to just draw artists without eyes. And um, yeah, without I drawing. eyes, without the eyes. Yeah, actually, no, never mind. I, I was, I think I was drawing, what was I doing? Maybe, I'm not, I might be taking credit for something I didn't think of. It might have been a friend of mine that might have told me not to draw in the eyes, or maybe I was just too lazy to draw in the eyes. But regardless, that's why I started illustrating. A bunch of rappers with the eyes. That's, um, there was um, like a, a, a painter called Modigliani and uh -huh. I'm not trying to show off I'm just Italian and he's uh -huh. Italian so <laughs> just yeah. very easy cultural gap for me to know and and yeah. that was his thing like all his painting like and he, as much as it was like classical style of painting but yeah. they didn't have the eyes they were all like covered and yeah. that's, that's what his style uh, but I'm gonna keep going with the questions because you really moved with this you know um, with with the, with the wonderful experience that you were sharing and concept yeah. that you were sharing uh -huh. So I'm going to move to question number two. Um, Laura is asking, I'm curious about these black and white illustrations. Did you create them? What's the story? So these black and white illustrations are actually just pieces of um, Kaz's work. All, all of the photography here is just Kaz's work. So I, I grabbed them from just online, from some of from his Instagram. But these are pieces that he he's drawn in, essentially. But yeah. So there are photography, either photography pieces or um, of illustrations. Yeah, all of this is like, I'm primarily just going to be doing the editorial work and just laying it out. But these are all pieces that have already been like illustrated by cause. And I'm going to try to see if there is like a website or something so I can share it in the chat. Yeah. And, um, everybody, I think that is quite popular mainly for, for the toys, for the... Um, yeah, he's very popular for the toys. People would recognize it from, for the toys. So, I'm probably gonna I think the best thing is to share his Instagram, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pass it on to Val so we can have it in the chat. Yeah. So we all know. And in the meantime, let me go ahead and read more. So Val is sharing with us also. Uh, when I when I first started in this industry, you couldn't pay me to take criticism or feedback. It was really bad. Feedback yeah. left like felt like a personal attack. I didn't know how to handle it and my heart suffered. I couldn't yeah. stand to hear that I finished or posted a painting that I needed improvement. I shut it out. I got upset and felt angry. Learning to take a constructive criti critic and non-constructive critic that will will get when po posting on internet is really important totally val yeah. did you ever experience that what how do you deal with um feedbacks and criticism 
Uh, at first, I wasn't too good at it. I think um, I've gotten better over the over the years. But at first, like I said, I thought I was always in the right, and I always thought like my design was immaculate. So I, w- I wouldn't take it, and that obviously stunted my growth for a bit in my as a designer because you have to take criticism. You can't you can't think you're always right. So yeah, I definitely relate to Val. Part of working learning how to work with other um yeah i think and and I w- i'm on the same boat like i i remember one of my um first uh employee uh-huh. telling me that i was my biggest enemy not because of the quality yeah. of the design but just because i would shut down when i thought i wasn't doing well yeah. um although i think like i had a little my, my issue was that i was my biggest critics you know like i mm-hmm. had the opposite like i would have loved to be as conf- like like everything that you're saying right now you know like i was confident i didn't care thought yeah. it was the best want to put out there i think that's great you know that's such a freedom mm-hmm. uh, i think everything's got a pro and cons that's why yeah for sure <laughs> and i've seen a vinyl record behind you i'm a bit of a collector myself yeah um, what what in particular um i do a lot of 80s hip-hop and soul music and okay that's that's where i'm at um cool. def jam def jam okay <laughs> what about you um these are actually pieces i think i thrifted these vinyls because i don't want to actually use my vinyls to like put on there because i want to like be able to play them but this is bob dylan i've okay. never listened to it and i've never i don't plan to listen to it this is just kind of like for this thing all my vinyls like i mean uh <laughs> My vinyls I actually listen to right here. I have Green Day right oh, here. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have ACDC up there. But, yeah. I don't... Share with us. <laughs> yeah. But... Okay. Let us know in the chat as well if you... What, what's your... If you are if you are a vinyl collector, if you enjoy music, let us know. I'm also trying to dig for more questions because the chat is super. I think everybody's getting excited about these amazing topics that we're talking about. And by the I, way, Val, thank you so much for sharing your experience. Yeah. I actually, <laughs> I hopped on Photoshop without mentioning it to anyone, but yeah, I'm on Photoshop now because I'm done with or InDesign. I've already moved on, so like, I already have my little mock-up over here, and I'm mocking things up just so I can get a feel for how it's going to look on the hands. Also, we're going to create in, write, write a project ready to go for Behance. Yeah, no, this is created for Behance. Yep. Fantastic. Um, we have Luis, Luis Madrigal saying, right, remove the ego from self and allow yourself to grow within your field. And most importantly, never give up on learning. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what we're here for. That's why we're here at Adobe Live, learning together. Yeah. Sorry, there is a lot going on in the chat. So I'm just little, like sc- uh-huh. screening and no, reading. <laughs> everyone is uh, supporting Val that's amazing uh, everyone is loving Kyle's work uh, Val by the way Val has shared the link on uh, the chat so if you're watching from YouTube I keep repeating that all the time make sure to head on behance.net slash live that's the chat where we're hanging out where we can pass your question read your story and Andres is really asking amazing questions so if you want to share your story with us if you want to talk about your creative process your story feel free to head on behance.net slash live and type it in. And I'm here reading what everybody's saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and right now I'm just kind of messing around. Like none of this, none of this um, type is going to stay. I'm just kind of messing around with just how it feels and just how certain things look. That's kind of just what I do. I don't really worry about what the type is. I'm going to worry about the type at the very, not the very end, but later. Just doing um just kind of messing around with layouts i'd say got some love from bob dylan from steve festus bruce is asking how many pages the magazine going to be it's gonna be short i do i do like 10 pages max and i i i make sure that i try to cover a 
a certain like I make it feel cohesive. So yeah, ten pages, ten pages. It's gonna be short, but for me, ten pages takes a, a good amount of time to just get the overall feel of the entire thing. Yeah. Are you planning to do more images or text and? Uh yeah, we're gonna do um we're gonna do a good amount of images. I want to do images because he has great work and I want to show it. Question: How do you deal with the gutter space down the middle uh, of the spine? Some of the text, specifically on the right page, seems very close to the fold. This right here, this part. This is um. I mean, I'm just messing around with that. I could obviously move it, but certain things like I've seen a lot of like, if anything, I buy a lot of books and I buy a lot of magazines just to see how they like how it prints. So when designing stuff, I, I would say the more the more um, the more physical things you have of it to like to refer to and just to like look for for inspiration is good because then you can see like there's certain people that that write that put like the letters right there. They don't care. And it's kind of just like they're kind of just pushing the bar and trying to be more more or like less practical in the sense like I think as I get older too I think practical is, is good I like to be practical but as a designer I kind of want to push the bar and be like less practical I don't know like I like to break the rules a little bit more like after I've gone to school and everything I'm like I don't want to like listen to the rules or whatever I don't, I don't do that anymore and let's not forget Luis that that's a digital so I think that yeah. Luis um concern is uh really relevant when we're talking about a printed yeah. uh, magazine that requires a spine so the paper will be completely tucked in and those margin will become invisible mm -hmm. um but Luis, but uh, andres is taking the most of his space as if he's gonna as if, because he's gonna be like a flat almost like an image yeah. so uh you mentioned before that it's gonna be a digital magazine so i think that you can really get away with a lot when we have a flat image yeah look remember how i was telling you Claudia, how he would go underneath the he would go underneath like these like bus or he would go to these bus stops and like take apart their art so this is him yeah. right there in the act He's, oh um, yeah yeah oh that's so cool <laughs> yeah can you zoom in for us yeah that's a in. really cool photo yeah that's so amazing i think that's my favorite part of his whole story is him just doing that and and I don't know how he got them out, but he would just um, take them home and the um, very next day, he'd put them back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, out of, I'm out of that business now. <laughs> I'm not going to share. <laughs> but there are multiple way, ways of doing it. And it's beautiful when you do it to implement art into the city. But yeah. that's the beauty of street art. I mean, you mm -hmm. speak to my, you speak to my heart with that because that's the you yeah. know the idea of freedom the idea of sharing the idea of you know being a collective together in the street and that's a very big big conversation when you go into street art uh yeah. between graffiti culture and street art culture i mm. the reason why i don't call myself a graffiti artist is because i've been caught in between these kind of conversations and yeah. i just kind of stepped out because i admire art in general and i think everyone has got their way of doing it and yeah but there is a lot of you know different i think the graffiti belongs to the street um, yeah because they are for everybody and they share mm -hmm. a personal message to the world and i love that yeah i do gardens by the way uh I'll, I'll probably share with you what i do at some point but i just do different gardens with different th with different themes it can be a uh -huh. fish garden you know okay <laughs> i just transform everything into a garden <laughs> that's cool like gar what do you mean by garden though i'm like so garden to me is like a like a field like a, a field and then uh -huh. instead of the flower maybe it yeah. could be just geometrical shapes or it could okay. be like bees oh, okay. or like or like birds or yeah yeah you know and then i do different themes one so like it could be maybe uh -huh. like a desert garden where everything uh -huh. is you know more like gotcha. succulents or or literally fish so mm -hmm. i think that's where you know and or i do a letter garden that's where the letter the the, the alphabet came from because it was just oh. shapes and so to, to me, garden is like an open field, and then you can grow whatever you I want. See. You can oh, okay. grow fish or like letters. Or uh -huh. <laughs> Talking no, about cool. breaking boundaries, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I see. That's super cool. 
I thought you meant like an actual like an actual garden with plants because I'm I'm recently getting into plants and like owning a bunch of plants. So that's why I thought of just plants. Yeah, I mean that's I actually that's um Andres, we gotta hang out afterwards, you know, after the stream, we're gonna we're gonna hang out a little. I I that's what my book is about. My book is called Plant Therapies and huh? is all illustration about plants. Oh, that's super um, cool. And this um is actually like a I, I won an award because I printed it a, a little bit off the grid people like that people the printer I, I, uh -huh. I struggled to find the printer that wanted to print it the way that I want it yeah because it's a three pass of print so it's got uh -huh. a full white and then you gotta put twice the CMYK color so full okay. colors afterwards to uh, to see because I printed on on recycled cotton paper because I wanted to be super green and super ethical because yeah. it was about plants so I wanted to be yeah. Uh, to keep the integrity of the project all the way through. Uh -huh. But anyway, cool. enough about me. I wanna I wanna know more more about you and the pro. We'll, we'll talk later. It, it okay. sounds like we got <laughs> sounds like we got uh, a lot of things in common, which is super exciting, and I'm really really happy of of being here hosting you. Uh, and um, let's see what's going on in the chat. So okay. We have Bruce saying that's so crazy. So how did he do? He take the poster home and reworked it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you know Andres, but I, oh. I uh, co-host a show called Rework It with Asus Ramirez. Oh. So I think yeah. that that's where Bruce was hinting that it reworked it. Oh. Bruce, that's super funny. <laughs> Fantastic. Everyone is loving um, that photo. Yeah, no, it's super cool. <laughs> what is your favorite app, Andres? Photoshop. Photoshop. Yeah, Photoshop. What it's my favorite app. Yeah, please go ahead. What What do I usually what? I'm sorry. I was just asking what What is your favorite creation in Photoshop? What do you usually do? Um, I'm right now. I'm learning to like manipulate images. There's a. I'm gonna shout out this artist on in, Instagram. Where he's a designer. His name is Victor H Studios. Super cool. He does a bunch of photo manipulation. And he really inspired me to get into it. I'm really bad at it, but I'm. I, I hope to become as good as him one day. He, um, Could you please tell me his name again? Because I'm going to go and it's talk him. Victor with a K. I uh -huh. Victor with a K. Victor H. Just the letter yeah, H Studios. Yeah, show us. And I think my... that that's, you know, that was one of the questions that was asking you, you know, artists that you look up to. Yeah, Victor H. Studios. He's actually recently, I, I just recently looked into like what he's doing and I think it's super cool um yeah this is his instagram right here and he does a lot of photo manipulation so for example he did this one which i found so interesting which was um he i don't know what he he shows the process on instagram and i find this so cool like even this like the <laughs> the statue of liberty but he like manipulate i think that's so cool like making it so he does um what else has he done so just know. composition of different photos? Yeah, just like, even for like the McDonald's, like this is like the McDonald's sign. He put his like his logo on it. I think it's super cool. But yeah, just like little things like this too. This is like a famous image and like he changed the grenade into like a flower or flowers. But yeah, this works really cool. Really interesting. And um, just a quick reply to Uriel do I have stuff for the next rework it Uriel we are always super happy to take new um, new files for rework it so feel free to go ahead and share it I know that uh, Val has already um, shared the link is iamcloudy.com slash rework it share your file we're super happy to take InDesign Illustrator Photoshop file and rework it live so whenever you're ready um, just give us a shout out and, and send your file. And if it's not a final product, that's the beauty of the daily creative challenges of all the Adobe Live. You know, we, we can see together where to take it. You know, that's the beauty of these live collaborations that we do. And Val has been sharing the Instagram for Victor Studios. Thank you so much, cool. Andres, for sharing. Yeah, super cool, dude. Um, what treatment are you giving to the photos? Because I can see things changing. Yeah, I'm doing um blending options. I'll do it right now again. But it's just basically I go onto the image itself. And I'll do it again just so you so people can see. 
So I'll just grab an image. And I'm actually curious, does anyone know if there's like a, a fast, quick command key for place embed? Because I've been designing for so long and I don't know how to just do a quick key for that. I don't think I put that in the chat because I've searched up online and I can't find anything. For place a, place a file that is already embedded? Yeah, place like an embed image. Like just to place an image more than anything. So I think that when you drag when you drag a photo in, it will automatically uh -huh. be converted into a smart object, but I'm gonna, uh -huh. I wanna test it first. Cause I mean, before, don't take me. Yeah, it's I like, be no, to... say for example, we have a we have a file on Photoshop, right? And I yep. wanna bring an image in without having to like drag it from my desktop or drag it from a folder onto the actual Photoshop icon. Like how can I just, like for example, on Illustrator, it's like command shift P to place an image. Oh, okay. So the, as far as I know, there is no uh, shortcut, but uh -huh. you can, it's just under file and then place embed. Yeah. That's as far as I know, although you can customize your, your keys. Oh, really? So, yeah. So if you, um, if you, I think it's a command K, she'll take you to the general um, oh. option. Let me see if it's that. Yeah. See, it's command K will take you uh -huh. to your preferences. And I believe that you can get, uh, your shortcut there. Let me see if that's that's where you get your shortcuts. Uh, no, so the shortcuts is a little bit more complex. It's not only Command K, it's Shift, Shift, Option, Command K. So if you use Shift, Option, Command K on your uh -huh. keyboard, you'll be able to um, to use a sh any shortcut, of course, that is not already in use uh, for your place in bed. Oh, okay. so I'll do like... I'll keep it simple. Do shift command. What can I do? Cool. Add. And you got it. Yeah. We, we got it. Let me see. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Good. All right. Cool. Thank you. No worries. All right. I'm so, so happy when we um, share. So. Okay. So I have an image right here. We're going to yep. give it its texture by right clicking on the image on the file the layer i'm going to go on to blending options and from here i'm going to go on to multiply and we're going to hit these little guys right here we're going to hit option hold option and click on them both of them and then we just drag this one and you can see like the texture comes in and out so i just give it a little bit or actually right there this one i don't think this one's doing anything really like that and that's pretty much it so i just kind of pull it a little bit like that and you can kind of mess around depending on what you like. But we'll do like that. On the other two images here. Oh, sure. There is any reason why you like to fade the image? And are you going to look at, use it to, like, for negative space for the text? or? Yeah, so I do that because I do two layers. So I do one layer with the texture, and then I do a copy of it. Oh. And then I put it into multiply, and I bring down the opacity. And it kind of gives it the feel that it's printed. Like if you look at it, like it's a little, or I don't know if this one, this image isn't, is the best, but if I lower it a little bit more, it feels printed. And my whole thing is I, I want it to look printed. So. You're just giving it that texture. Yeah. To it, making it real. Yep. That's the beauty of Photoshop. I think like the most successful Photoshop compositing or mock-up mm -hmm. is when it like, it looks real. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I just have to adjust this thing because it's not fair. it's not fitting the mock. We gotta stress this guy out a little bit. And by the way, Andres, whenever you're ready with any uh -huh. option, like if you want to give us an option of a photo, uh, or I was about to say, me yeah. and Val yeah. are here ready for okay. you. Okay, <laughs> I'll ask you right now. <laughs> And I'm gonna take a second. I know that that's like very middle school, but I got my mom huh. and dad here from Italy watching, and they're super cute. Huh. My dad is 70. I'm not gonna huh. say his age, but you know, he's he's got his age. He's and huh. he's learning. He's learning how to use Photoshop. So yeah. he's he's literally watching you to learn how to use Photoshop. And <laughs> 75. I feel so. like I'm the worst teacher though because I don't. I'm not even explaining what I'm doing, but. Hopefully I just think they up. get excited to see yeah. the work happening. Yeah. 
so for this magazine, I think I'm gonna do um, I want to do a few different layouts, but I want to do a layout where it's two different images. So I'm gonna, if you guys want to help me out, choose two what two images are gonna go side by side for a spread. Let's do this. So I'm gonna just choose a few here and see which ones work the best. I wanted to have some sort of contrast, but let's do. I'm gonna just throw a few images here. Try to flip this one this way. I'll just keep this right here, but hold on, let's keep placing a few different ones. I like to layer them and then seeing which ones I like the most. I'll just toggle between them. You just gotta tell us which one is number one, which one is number two, and which one is number three. All and right. then I know Vali is ready to make that happen. Do one more. <laughs> Vali saying that her mom also watches the stream and then calls her to tell her that she did good. <laughs> <laughs> Misty saying, Claudia, you totally put your poor dad on blast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's amazing because it's like at his age, he's watching the streams and just, you know, just for him to connect. He watches him from his mobile, <laughs> usually in bed because he literally is very late right now already. So, what part of Italy? Is learning. Sorry? What part of Italy? I'm from the south, uh, the Sorry. area called Lecce, just in front of Greece. Lecce. The tip of the hill. Oh, cool. how, how is it over there right now? Um, so, sorry, what do you mean? Uh, like, uh, so how, how is, um, I don't even know, maybe like the weather. <laughs> oh, the weather. Oh, yeah. is, is my parents live on a boat like for 80% of their time and it's pretty chilled. Uh -huh. It's not a great place for work. Unfortunately, that's okay. why I'm not there, but otherwise uh -huh. it's just gorgeous, gorgeous area. It's yeah. just a, you know, sea, beautiful, gorgeous uh, water, sea, and, huh. you know, a lot of Italian food and a lot of yeah. Greek Greek and uh, Roman history. So uh -huh. it, it was featured a couple of times on the um, National Geographic, yeah. not because it's got like anything crazy like the Colosseum, but because uh -huh. it has so many different things that are outstanding. We produce like uh, oil and wine and, uh -huh. you know, so... I have a cocktail on the seaside all day. That's the life. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Although you must huh. have, um, you must desire a career as a fisherman or a fisherwoman oh, okay. <laughs> to stay. <Gotcha>. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, I got the two images. I, I, I'm kind of curious to see what you guys think. Um, Beautiful. Tell us which, which one, one is works one best. All right. And which this one, one right two. here is one. So the one on the. On my left hand side, this one right here is one. And then this one is number two. Okay, so we got the one with the antenna is number two and the one with the color blocks is number this, one. Yep. Perfect, so this is number one. And then let's show again number two. Perfect. So go ahead and let us know and we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a shout out when the pool is ready. I can already like, it's almost like I can hear Budaval clicking and clacking on her keyboard, making that um, make, making that that poll happening, and we're gonna shut out as soon as it's live and you're ready to vote. And thank you so much, Andres, for giving us the options. Yeah, I'm. I'm I like to collaborate with um, with the audience and just kind of hear what other people have to say. It's gonna be like a teamwork type assignment, I guess. I'm just telling everybody to Google Salento, which is the area where I'm from. <laughs> I'm curious, though. I kind of want to search up Salento. Is it with a C? Um, no, with the S. S A L E N T O. Is that, is that not Salento? Is this yeah. it? Yeah, oh, that's let's it. Let's see the images. Oh, this is nice. At the place. Oh, Andres, you're breaking my heart today. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like <laughs> emotional after this. <laughs> Graffiti, home. Yeah. <laughs> meant to be, meant to be. 
and Vuruba was ready. The pool is there, ready for you guys to go and have a click and choose between number one and number two, which image we're going to be using for um, the the magazine. Andres, thank you so much for giving a shout out to, to my area, to the south of Italy. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, and yes, go and vote. And by the way, don't don't place the number one and the number two in the chat. Val has created a poll. So all you got to do is to click on the link and I will, you know, give you a few minutes to vote. And then I'm going to go ahead and give the result. And I'm going to give a vote myself. I'm going to go and get my preference as well. <laughs> Val, thank you so much, by the way, for supporting our polls. You're amazing. Oh, we got like a big preference at the moment. Okay, so make sure to make sure to vote because like it looks like it's going in one direction. Let's see, 30 seconds to go, I will say. Vote, vote, vote for number one or number two. Andres, I don't know if you don't want to show them again, just real quick for yeah. everybody that showed just joined us. So this so is number that's, one right here. Yep. And this is number two. Yep. So go ahead and click on the poll. And by the way, if you're watching from YouTube and you're like, what are you talking about? Head on behance.net slash live and you will find the link to the poll from the amazing, lovely Wuruval and you can vote and tell us what you use. And I'm going to refresh it. Let's give us like 30 seconds for now. Uh oh, catching up, catching up. Things are moving. <laughs> In the meantime, we have like a comment regarding choose uh -huh. like the, the two choices from Bruce. Bruce Gonzalez is saying, I like one for the contrast, uh, too, because you have the old train. Uh, mm -hmm. Sinks next page is, a su is the subway. That makes yeah. sense. <laughs> Laura is saying, I love the interactive element of voting here. That's so much fun. Yeah, we're live. We're live. We're together. We love to create together. So, and for, and, and of course, Andres, thank you so much for letting us participate to your work. You know, that's amazing. Yeah. I'd love to answer some questions too, just as far as like, if anyone has questions on how to do things, if I can answer them, because I'm really, bad. I think I'm the worst teacher. Like if, if people look at what I do, they won't pick up anything just because I don't explain anything. And I'm also just like, I don't do things the best of way. So I'm really unorthodox in that sense. So I think you're doing just fine. We, cool. we are like, you know, there is so much, uh, there are so many things about um, Adobe Live. I heard so many people that also like our professional, fellow professional that watch yeah. Adobe Live while they're working. Uh -huh. um, so is the conversation and I think you sparked some amazing conversation regarding the life of a creative, you know, yeah. uh, that's, that's huge. And that's so important. And I, people, everybody, the majority of the lovely community, we have such a wonderful, loving community here. Uh, I feel so, so lucky of being part of this amazing community, Andres, everyone is, yeah. you know, every welcome the way that, that you do things and the way that uh -huh. everybody uh, do things. So it's wonderful to to see what you do. If I see something that is like, yeah. you know, catches my eyes, I'll, I'll uh -huh. point it out. Um, but people love uh, love to see you working. So just keep yeah. keep doing you. Keep and, cool. and if there is any question, I'll definitely pass it to you. But okay. it's time to refresh the poll and see the result here are in. Let me do one more time, just in case, just in case. Uh -huh. Budaval, by the way, I go like a, a pie graph now. <laughs> We're <laughs> like evolving into, uh, uh, into infographics as well. And we have the winner, image number one with 70.6% of oh. votes. Uh, and image number two was running with 29.4 and oh, i gotta tell you at the very beginning it was uh -huh. nearly like 
everyone liked number one like yeah. it was nearly 95 percent. so uh -huh. within the first couple of minutes so uh, yeah, i'm was... glad that you didn't express a preference andres because no i, I kind of did though because i left it on i left it on number one because i liked it more i could oh. easily left it like that but i took it off i would only leave the number number one because i preferred it subliminal messages yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i dig that <laughs> So then this is good. I'm gonna start off with a new spread. The chat is so fun. It's going so fast. I'm gonna try to catch up while you work. All right. That was my favorite, by the way. I voted yeah. one as well. Super cool. <laughs> <laughs> So Luis is saying we got we got some love for you, Andres. And as as I was saying before, this beautiful beautiful loving community. Uh, Luis is saying sometimes just visualizing what you're doing is enough for an instruction. Yeah, yeah that's working conceptually. Um, yeah, we have some fun conversation. I I braid my my hair a lot. I got I got big curly hair, Andres. Uh -huh. and, I think people are talking about some some old photos and uh, i remember one old uh, uh poor paco that is here behind the scene helping us out uh, uh -huh. he probably remembers this this thing that i'm this uh, this story but um uh -huh. we work with the green screen paco makes the magic happen makes the mm -hmm. green screen disappear and lovely background appears and i decided to show up to i believe what was my second adobe live um with a uh, green extensions hair like i like to do oh, like the side braids yeah. and i have these really long braids and they were of yeah. course green <laughs> uh -huh. so i had pretty much everything that was skewed out through the green yeah. screen in my braids as well uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and val was was talking about that um yeah air braiding but yeah so much fun and I think people thought that I was a rapper or something. I got I oh. got some comment on YouTube. Claudia, are you a rapper? <laughs> it, it looked like it was like a rainbow almost. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, every, imagine everything that was going to yeah. go on screen. Yeah. It was on in my head. hair as well. Yeah. So super. It was all, it was all, you know, it was a calculated uh, visual experience. Me and Paco, and no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I completely forgot, but it yeah. looked cool in the end. <laughs> I always miss Paco in the studio as like probably the, the best that I, I ever looked on video in my life. I don't know what he does with his magic. Paco, I know you're there hearing us. Thank you. <laughs> I took I leave off screenshot of your <laughs> of your lives. Is the whole studio if if it wasn't for this pandemic, would would um I get the opportunity to be like going over there in the studio or how would that work? So I don't know. Um, I don't know how things are and how things will be. My huh. experience, um, I can tell you of the about experience that I had uh, yeah. with the amazing team at Adobe Live behind the scene. Huh. Um, there are so many wonderful people that work to make this 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 show happens. And yeah. and again, like everyone is super super nice and there is a gorgeous atmosphere a lot of snacks a lot of coffee yeah. a lot of fruits a lot of energy drinks um there are a lot of photos happenings before and then um once you go into the recording room there is like a little waiting room where you can have a chat and again eat yeah. a lot and drink a lot uh, yeah. of, of juices and coffees and when you get into the studio there is this very big wall with a green screen and then there is all Paco's text which I don't know like I still don't know huh. I, I gotta say Paco taught me a ton especially since the pandemic a lot of things that I'm doing here are thanks to these these wonderful advices in terms of lights and cameras yeah. but like that's Paco's territory you know that's okay. his reign and he makes things happen in there so you just uh -huh. just sit physically sit down on a desk like a normal uh -huh. desk but then you've got all the amazing tech and the green screen behind you and mm -hmm. And Paco is next to you, and and what I always say, like you, yeah. he gives you the best high five. So I'm sorry you cannot can experience that. I'm gonna give you a, a virtual high five at the end, but it's just an amazing atmosphere. Hopefully, yeah. I can give you a little bit of that cheer from Manchester. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paco is saying good times. Yes, good times.
Yes, one big green wall. Steve is saying, seeing the lives in the studio were always great. Yes, I completely agree. We're trying our best with these from home versions. Yeah. But big love for Paco. And now Paco has to deal with all of us from home. So uh -huh. <laughs> I think it's even harder. <laughs> What do you think? Are, are you, do you prefer working from home or do you miss going out outside? Um, for me, I do miss going out because right now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in Manchester in the UK yeah. uh -huh. and, uh, my family is in Italy, so I've not seen them in a while. Yeah. And half of my life is in the Bay area in San Francisco. So uh -huh. my life was literally, uh, um, a month in the UK and a month in San Francisco and yeah. then hopping in Italy or anywhere else. I needed to go for work. Yeah. So right now, like I definitely miss traveling. Mm -hmm. uh more than anything else and and again like you know the beauty of working with amazing people is that you, you get conversation like the one that we're having today you know yeah. like about shared interest and and exactly i love what you said before like about stories because that's that's what makes life interesting you know yeah. skills everyone can learn skills yeah. but nobody experiences are what make life interesting and fun and yeah totally what you were saying my girlfriend makes fun of me because i like to talk to like if there's any any old person around like especially super old, like when they're like 80 90 years old i love talking to them i think hearing their life stories and just hearing what they have to say and just what their their outlook on life is so interesting to me because it's one of a kind and it's something that is like it ages and it, it, um your experience and just how much growth you see in an individual you hear it through there, just like their storytelling. That's why I I love speaking with, I mean, everyone in, in particular, but like older people, like I really enjoy that. That's super cool. I completely agree. Um, we have a question here from Hadi. Which type of font is good for magazine serif or sans serif? What do you um, think, Andres? I would say you have to have a combination of both. I think contrast is something super important to have in a magazine. If you can't have too much serif and too much sans serif, you have to have a little bit of both. Um, yeah, I would say a combination of both is important and just a combination. If anything, one thing I would say is contrast and balance. Those two things are so important in design. And, and, and you did something right there, which I'm going to stop and ask. Mm -hmm. The image was larger and then it got smaller. What did you do? Yeah. Did you mask it? What happened there? Let us know, please. I'm not like, yeah, I just, I just erased it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I should have masked it. I think masking is a lot better, but I just erased it. <laughs> okay. That's cool. Yeah. I just literally wanted to know what happened because it was super yeah. fast and it was like, cool. Yeah. That works. Uh -huh. But that's part of your confidence, isn't it? Like think yeah. that that's again, you know, the way the way that you work which is fantastic and i can see huh. a lot of the contrast that you were talking about like huh. between serif and sans serif even in yeah. the way that you lay out the page mm -hmm. um and in fact we do have another question from val what yeah. kinds of things are you keeping in mind while you're putting these spreads together do you have any um art rules that you always follow or you just mm -hmm. experiment a lot um the one thing i do want to accomplish with this piece is I want to have some sort of balance between this aesthetic, which is more street, more graffiti, like handwritten, and his more minimal and clean aesthetic he's taken as of now, which is very like Helvetica, clean, minimal. So I want to have a balance of both. That's what I want to accomplish. And then just kind of mess around with layouts and just show his work in the best possible way. Amazing. We have a lot of love for all the people from everybody. We got Viola saying, love chatting with old people. Val, I love old people. Love to hear about the stories. Yeah, and Val is, Val is saying, I think that there are so many ways to do things with the app. Sometimes it's not doing the right things or what people think is right, but it's doing the way that brings you the most joy. Yeah. Totally. Totally. 
if someone if someone like asked me what what would you want it for like the the most magical app mm -hmm. to me is like you know when the when the app feels like it doesn't exist like it's not there so um, you can just express yourself yeah what would you be your dream feature my dream feature on on an app yeah like on photoshop since that's what i mean using, for i wish i really wish because i i I've spent a lot of time like trying to figure out how i can make more more pieces look and look more and more realistic and the one thing i still haven't really learned is just the three-dimensional aspect to it so just being able to render out a video of like a piece or um or like render out like the actual print and put it in different environments i think um adobe dimension is getting there mm -hmm. but it's still for my liking it's still not to where it's as realistic as it could be and did you play did did you work with it or yeah I'm, i work I'm not, I'm not an expert so I'm yeah adobe asking. dimension is like it's it's super super easy to use i like it because of its um it's how easy it is to use but there are a lot of features that i think um make it difficult to create very very realistic things so it's um i'm still waiting i would i would love to have like a an app that I think there are apps too. I just haven't mastered them yet. That allow you to create pieces in in three dimensional, mm -hmm. like make it more three dimensional. Val saying the dream feature right now. I wish I could set a hotkey for bio brush mode. I want to have a shortcut to set a brush to clear. Oh, that's cool. I don't know if you've ever seen um, Val work, but she creates amazing paintings. Amazing paintings. Let me see. I want to see. <laughs> yeah, let's see. give a shout out to Val. Let's give a shout what, out to Val. Let me. Let me. The best way. Um, the her best Behance. ways, perhaps. Yeah, let's go and see her Behance, which is Behance.net slash Voodoo Val. I need to search it up probably. Voodoo. That is what Voodoo Val. Like that is V double O D double O and then uh, Val. All right. Oh, sure. Yay. Yeah. Let's search, share some love and make sure to follow our amazing Voodoo Val. She hosts um, the creative challenges in Photoshop's Photoshop's Photoshop. <laughs> and um, we got a feature here with Fresco with the helmets. There is a, um, if you go back to a, to a project, there is a yeah. helmets from Mandalore this that's one. been featured in, yeah. This is we cool. love your work, Val. And that's all done in Fresco, I believe. In Fresco, okay. Yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> yes, Val is like, oh no, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this one. I like this one. <laughs> The mystery machine. Beautiful. Learning together. And Val was talking again regarding the brushes. It seems to have settings that make them unable to be an eraser. The clear mode sort of forces to become an eraser. Yeah, I agree. Yay! Shout out to Val. Thank you so much, Andres, for sharing. That's very, very oh, sweet. I like seeing a lot of art. I think I'm really open to seeing everyone's And he's pieces. totally deserved. Yep. We love Val. We love you, Val. Laura is saying, I really love the Animal Crossing project, but actually all of them. Yep, yep. And that's another thing. Of, if you ever... Um, if you ever watch one of her stream, like total, total super freedom vibe, you know? Yeah. Like, that's what I, I love that a lot of things happen, which really, really are the beauty of the, um, of the live. Yeah. Oh, what's happening here? Is that already, is that like a photo of a 
like a card yeah or? like i tried to like it was a card it was his like little signature or like a little mm-hmm. like illustration like and um he just wrote his name and i think it's a date he did this in 95 i think actually no. did he did 95 yeah maybe but like I, I was like looking hunting for a while for images or like just illustrations and a lot of handwriting from him because i want to incorporate it into the the zine I love the way that you're zooming out the images and like taking details. Yeah. I think that's so cool because there's so much movement uh-huh. into those pieces. I'm gonna keep that. And I, what, I, what I do too also is um, I like make a bunch of copies of a bunch of files and then I start back from the beginning. So on my desktop, I have all like the everything so far, but we have. What is this? this kind of I'm gonna like obviously by the end of it I'm gonna have like 10 spreads so it's gonna be 10 different files and then we'll piece it all together I, I'm, I'm gonna ask you something and and oh. if it, if you never use that don't worry at all but oh. I think it would be like a wonderful way that you can like also do yeah. have you ever worked with the uh, layer comps no I mean like I was I know that there's like a way you can show me. I, I'm open to learn. We'll 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 have we'll have another conversation. I just want oh, to know okay. if, you, if you ever work with it. But no, no. Maybe maybe we can do like a pre or after stream because I think that like oh. with the way the way that you're doing all these amazing spreads, yeah. it'll yeah. be so cool. It's quicker. You, you can you can just literally toggle between one and the other. But yeah, keep going. Out, like we'll. Oh, I don't. Okay. That's just me geeking out. <laughs> cool, cool. No, I know. I feel like there's there's so many ways of doing things, and I think, I, yeah, I think I do things a lot slower, and definitely. I think oh no, 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 no! Is is I is just something that will complement what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. It, you will still do exactly the same, or what you're doing is just it's just me being a geek and be like, oh, what can we do more? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Steve, Steve, apparently, sorry, I'm getting told off, Andres. I'm getting okay. told off because um, I guess I missed a comment regarding uh, Substance 3D apps. Uh-huh. Uh, so let me go back and see because I got Steve saying, Claddy mentioned to Andres the Substance 3D apps. Adobe bought them two years ago and they are really, really good for 3D. So, oh, sorry, okay. Steve, thank you for thank you for sharing again. And that's, Steve, actually, that's a really good way. If you ever want to meet, if you ever... I have a question or for for whatever reason just because the chat goes so fast or we um, are looking at the work and for whatever reason i don't ask i don't read your question just submit it again in the chat just like steve said thank you so much um so you can get to my attention and i can pass your question to andres so steve thank you so much for letting me know and andres check out this three sub- substance 3d apps. substance 3d okay yeah Adobe bought them two years ago and they are okay. really, really good for 3D. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah. And Bali is loving how honest and open um, to learning you are. Yeah. Andres. I, I do not know everything. I don't know much. I don't know much. I don't know that much. Nobody does. Yeah. Nobody like, does. That's the truth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I end up learning so much at any time that like I participate either if I'm a guest or a host or anything that I do like there is no one time where I don't learn something it's crazy yeah I mean today right now I'm like excited because what the heck I think it just closed on me um you taught me how to do the the quick command for place in bed which is super cool you got your shortcut now yeah no (laughs) I've, I've been doing it the long way for so many years now so you just saved me so much time i'm so happy yeah so exciting to see this what's the plan for for tomorrow tomorrow um so today everything is really rough as far as just messing around with layout but i really want to show people just how i build a a behance project because because I think Behance is a really good platform where you can, you can, um, you can just show your work in the best of light, and you'll get a lot of opportunities through it. Um, yeah, like for example, just 
how I do like gifs, gifs, whatever, and like just play certain things and just fully format a, a project I think is really good. Like all these oh, are so concept- we'll get some animation tomorrow? Yeah, we'll get like, I mean, just a gif. It's not nothing too crazy, but yeah, that's all I know how to do. And then, yeah, like these like little gifs. I think that's so that. exciting. I I, yeah. I I never asked that anyone that's done like a little animation personally. I'm sure that there's yeah. gonna, I'm sure that there's been someone that's done it for sure. But yeah, I always get excited when I think see things moving. Yeah, but I'll do that. And like I mean, I'm gonna just I'm gonna try to finalize it by tomorrow. Hopefully, I mean I don't think it's is it required for me to finish it tomorrow? Oh no, no, there is no. You know, we yeah. are here sharing your way of work we're here to learn the way that you yeah. work and to observe the way that you work uh-huh. so um feel free to um to go as far as you want and to focus on the thing that you, that you believe are relevant or you want to yeah. you want to share and um i mean w- my best advice and i know you were traveling and dressed but like uh-huh. usually i do like a little um like icebreaker before the stream and yeah. my biggest advice that i always share with everybody because uh, you know, I, to me, I get the same, like, even if I've done a, an Adobe Live before, it's like always yeah. the first time, yeah. like be yourself because mm-hmm. that's the most beautiful thing that people can ever see, you know, just, yeah. just be yourself, do what you think is important for you to do. And also you will have the opportunity to finish your work if you want to, and, and then share it on BNs. And I know that there is a, a folder of yeah. a Adobe Live project. So your work will be will be tagged as long as you tag adobe live uh-huh. it will be part of that um collection as well so no cool. pressure cool yeah and everybody's excited for animation tomorrow yay <laughs> val is sharing some gold info here so sometimes the most valuable lesson isn't always the upskill it's learning about the mind as a designer and understanding how you think more question does andres double in graffiti as well i want to i want to like i want to start dabbling into a lot of mediums i think um graffiti is one of them for sure i'll, I'll look into it yeah <laughs> Watch this space coming soon. Yeah. You guys can follow me on Instagram. I mean, no, don't follow me on Instagram because I don't post on Instagram. <laughs> I don't really post on anything. We're going to follow you on Behance. Yeah, on Behance. That's the only way I post. So if you guys want to keep up with what I'm doing, Behance, for sure. What is this font? I want it, say Val. This font right here? Yeah. Helvetica? It's Helvetica. It's a classic. It's my safe, my safe font. I like it a lot. Do you have any other um, faves? I like Helvetica. I like Courier New. And I like, let me see. I could probably just go through here. I like. Mm-hmm. I like Input Sands. And Which one? Sorry. Input Sans. Input Sans. And then I also like Times New Roman. I really like Times New Roman. I'm addicted to um, a font called Integral. Let me see. Integral. Sure. Let me make sure that is that. Let me go and double check first. Uh, let me see. I think integral is an open font, which is the one that I'm obsessed with. That is still, I think is impact. I'm so bad with names. What, what was it? My memory is gone a long time ago. I'm looking for it, <laughs> literally. <laughs> C 
So Integral is the open font version, which I don't believe that is um, on Adobe font, but I found that I found the same one in, uh, in Adobe font. I'm, let me do a little little research and I, I'll, I'll get back. And let us know in the chat with, with you have a favorite font. Oh no, Bali was talking about the graffiti font. Oh, the graffiti font. That's yeah. actually his um it's a scan. It's um a scan of his like he he didn't. He um that's a causes, real like, thing. Autograph. Yeah, it's a real thing. No, no font, I wish. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice, huh? <laughs> yeah. I've actually been getting into um doing um like bringing in a lot more scans. Cause I think scans are super cool. It's a cool little like add on to, to editorial work. I will definitely, if you haven't worked with it, uh, suggest you to, um, use capture. Capture. Yeah. Okay. It's a, it's like a, an app that goes also on mobile and allows uh -huh. you to like trace right away. Okay. Um, so like a super cool workflow is like, if you uh -huh. draw or, or see something, you yeah. can get it on capture and it transforms into a vector. And then there is a plugin which you can like literally chuck it into a panel and it becomes like a font. Like oh. you, like, you literally, you literally say like this line is the letter uh. L. It doesn't matter uh. what it is as long as yeah. it's like is a vector shape and you assign like a character to yeah. it on your keyboard. Uh -huh. Done. Oh, that's so cool. so cool. Have you have you dabbled in like making a type, making a typeface? Um, I've done that crazy the crazy one that started from the graffiti. Huh? Um, that's the only one where I committed to do like A to Z, but otherwise huh? I, um, I like, see, that's, that's a weird personality trait of mine. I like to start new things, uh -huh. not to, you know, finishing them. <laughs> 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 I'm always ready to jump on the next project and yeah. travel and do some. So no, I only, I only completed one so far that is like actually available and he's out yeah. there how, how did you um how did you finish like finish it how, um how did i go from like the a to the z yeah so that's part of the graffiti project that i was t telling you about so i've literally huh. done shapes what i've okay. done i created like a, a set of shapes huh. and then i created like a grid yeah. And I just literally start to play with them. And, and don't forget that that started on the wall. So when he started on the wall, word, sorry, when he started on the wall, I would just yeah. doing my, I was just doing juicy, which is the, the oh, name okay. that I, that I used for my graffiti. So I had a limited uh -huh. letter, yeah. but then the C recalls the D, which recalls also the O and the P. So uh -huh. I just try to look at similar and the B. So I just try to get like similarities when I, when I try to build like a full alphabet, yeah. I really try to create my own rules, um, okay. looking for similarities in, in letters and, yeah. um, and then of course, like, you know, and when, when I kind of find the rule, like you were saying, breaking it. Yeah. So I first try to give myself this sort of safe net and then I'm like, right now I can play with it. So yeah. maybe like I punch a hole in it or change uh -huh. color or distort it. Mm -hmm. But that's, I think that, that, that's my, my, my workflow with it. Oh yeah, I'm looking into doing something like that. I want to set my own little font. There is a plugin. Let me see what is it called. Uh, there is a plugin for Illustrator uh, huh. called. Hopefully, I'll be able to find it. Font self. So font self is like huh. a is like is a plugin that you can uh, add to your Illustrator, which was the 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 panel that I was telling you before. Yeah. When you when you add this this app and shut off for anybody that wants to create a font in, in Illustrator, you can literally use anything you want, any 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 vector item, and then um, you download uh, font self. I think it's like is one one off fee, like you pay once for the for the plugin. And you add it to your illustrator and then mm. it creates like a, a panel and you literally mm. drag and drop your shape inside the panel and say this is the letter o p or whatever oh, you okay want. so you can create it you and then and then like you can download it as a full font and you can share it and use it in any project 
Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into that. So Bruce is asking, can we drop a cool graffiti artist that on his Instagram? Yes, Bruce, feel free to share a name. And then I'm sure Val can find um, maybe the Instagram tag with a click clickable link, but absolutely we are here to, to share. So if, the, if you have an artist and let us know again, like before we were talking about font, which one is your favorite font? But if you have a graffiti artist and you know, that's part of the theme today, uh, for this creation, let us know. Of course, we're always happy happy to learn. Um, what's your inspirations? Everybody was loving the graffiti font, which was actually the end. Right? Yes, <laughs> I know. I like that That's a too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to find a good graffiti font because I've looked a lot, and it's just hard. And Val has shared the link for Font Self as well. So if you want to go and have a look, everybody in the chat, you can just go and click on the link shared by, by Val. That being said, we're going to search up for some fonts. Let us know your favorite artist in the chat. Yes, let us know. You can go and have a look at your inspirations. Yeah, fonts.adobe.com. Let's see if I can find anything here. Yeah, I'd rather. You know something? Have, have you ever used the, um, the photo feature there? Like, um, the, the, I don't know exactly how the feature is called. Clearly, right I'm, not, I'm not using the professional terms. Uh -huh. But if you like click on the very top right, or the like there is like a search bar on the top and then on the yeah. right, uh, there is a the little camera and you can, if you have like any image of any text, huh. you can upload it. And then um, like see. Adobe fonts literally looks for, for a similar font. Uh, let's see. see if I can find this font right here. You're really stretching it. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. I think next step it will be like to, to, to assign a letter. Yeah. Actually, question. I'm trying to check the text and update me. No. Just stretching it. Yeah, I think that's such a personal. I know this one's really tough. Signature. Damn. That's okay. But that's the way it works. Yeah. Let's see. Marker. Question. What would be called? There's no graffiti section here that I, I'm gonna see if it's. Oh Let me see if I have any in my. Oh. I'm just literally like looking at your work and like doing oh. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying the, the process. You know, the thing is that with graffiti writing, like, is there, oh. is there really anything that could be a graffiti writing for real? I don't know. Because that's the personality that comes through yeah. the marker, yeah. isn't it? I think the one that I have are not are not like um, Adobe Phone ones. Uh -huh. I like the one with the drapes a lot. Um, there is a specific cap that you can huh? use on your on your can that uh -huh. has like a little tube at the end of the oh. um, and that and and that yeah. allows and that allows the, uh, the the color to kind of like condensate and then and then it huh? drips. So whenever you actually write, yeah. it creates all the drips while you're writing. So you don't have to go back and like fake the drips. Okay. But it's, it's just like a little tube that comes out of the cap of the can that gives you like that little like either sp you can either spray with it and create the uh -huh. dots or literally like if you go slow uh -huh. it retains it retains extra paint so it, it literally gives more paint per each spray 
yeah. and then it just kind of drips down. Man, that's I need to get into it. I, I'm just afraid of messing up because like it's not as easy as just control Z or command Z. You have to like paint over it, I think. But there are a lot of similarities. Like if you draw, especially uh -huh. like if you use the iPad with yeah. Fresco or like even with the Illustrator, there are yeah. there, I don't know if like that's the name of the technique. I call it cutting. Uh -huh. uh, I, I don't know if that's just the translation for my Italian terms. Uh -huh. um, but basically, like you 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 go over with a color, yeah. And then, like, even if your edge is not like perfect, yeah, you go over with another color on top of it. So by overlapping oh, okay. colors, um, you keep cutting the parts that you don't like. So you just mm -hmm. kind of like create the shapes, and that's that's the way that I usually draw like on the iPad as well. Um, okay. You can hide a lot of things just by yeah. going over the beauty of acrylic paint is that it's opaque i don't know if that's the, even the english word for it opaque, it's yeah. Not yeah it's not transparent so you can mm -hmm. overlay it and it covers mm -hmm. the, the color before on uh, below oh yeah. we changed perspective here yeah i'm gonna try to see if i can get like a uh a layout where it's this way but i don't know if i'll be able to find like i wanted to use like a graffiti type or some sort of like very very grungy feel but i don't know if i'm gonna be able to find something which is gonna oh man. If anyone's got something in the chat that you think yeah it's, it's a solid typeface that, that would fit this aesthetic we're going for something grungy something something grungy and graffiti like i don't know where else i could search i looked at adobe fonts and had no luck so what is this Graph Rider. Ooh, 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 Andres. Yeah. We have an amazing resource here okay. from Val, and I believe someone else, um, Uriel, share it first. So there is a website called graphwriter.com. Graph. You might pH. want to check it out. Is a G R F G R A double F writer dot com oh this is cool okay hey. Let's see. thank you uriel thank you val for sharing oh yeah okay let's try a few of these okay mm -hmm. so a lot of people them. getting excited about graffiti Thank you for sharing. In the meantime, I'm still like doing my homework on fonts.adobe.com because I'm sure <laughs> so there are thousands and thousands of fonts. Yeah. Let's see if I find something that might tickle your creativity. <laughs> Like we're working here, like we're making it happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so um, Val was asking to share um favorite artist and laura has been very sweet saying many of my favorites are adobe live streamers but outside that i really love aurelia duran she was a guest here last year yes uh -huh. big shout out to aurelia she's amazing i'm a big lover of her work um aurelia is a painter and illustrator based in france uh, uh -huh. i believe she's in paris uh, she also does mural she does mural she does illustrations. She she's done a wonderful book. And I know that she's on the you know, on right now uh -huh. um, doing another book with her illustrations and also she does animations. That's so cool. go and check Amer Aurelia Duran. She's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. 
Claudie, scroll back up a bit more for a link to the Font Self plugin, a great how-to video. Yes, yes, there are so many useful link. Um, oh, Laura is saying she lives in Copenhagen right now. Super cool. Copenhagen, that's Denmark, right? Yeah. Denmark. Have you ever been? I've never been, I've never been to Europe. I've always wanted to go. Which will be your favorite, like your first place to go? Um, I want to go to Italy. I think Italy's cool. Um, I, I took Italian classes in college, so I, I know very, very little Italian because I, I took French classes in high school and I confuse both of them nowadays, but <laughs> Italy for sure. It's the most recent. I think I know how to say Berlin. Mi chiamo Andres Italiano. <laughs> oh, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. I really think you'll dig Berlin. Berlin? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The design over there, the Bauhaus design is super, like, yeah. I think, yeah. Huge, huge street art culture as well. There is yeah. Pictoplasma events, uh -huh. installation. There are so, so many cool stuff. And by the way, yeah. yes, amazing everybody amazing people amazing community the chat is hot everybody is sharing we have digital does which is an amazing uh, graffiti artist we have so many different videos inspirations going on in the chat from bruce from uriel from um steve the chat is hot right now with so many resources and I love that everybody's showing um, videos and artists. Please keep it going. We love to see your inspirations and that, you know, it's, it's useful for everybody to share. Yeah. Be all I say in eight years of Italian classes and I'm still rusty. <laughs> Trust me, I was born in Italy and I'm still rusty. <laughs> <laughs> what other languages do you speak, um, Andres? Uh, I speak Spanish and um, Spanish, a bit of French and a bit of Italian. That's, but that's, that's it. Super cool. Yeah. What about you, Claudia? Um, yeah, I'm pretty much very similar to you. Like, uh, of course, Italian is my first language, English, Spanish, and a little bit of French. How did you get into speaking Spanish? Let me ask uh, so I I started because I had a I had like a, a Spanish class in a uni and mm -hmm. exactly like you were saying before I'm not about doing things by the book yeah so I was like okay this word on a book mm -hmm. doesn't make sense to me it's just yeah. a word it doesn't make any sense so mm -hmm. let me go and move into Spain because that's when the word makes means something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I know that what things are. Uh -huh. And I moved to Spain and I lived in Spain um, during uni to just, just to learn the language. So I yeah. lived in Malaga for a while. And and then, as I say, like, I love Frida Kahlo. So mm. I read a lot of things in, I wanted to read a lot of things in Spanish and yeah. music as well, you know? So that's how I learned, but mainly by living, living in Malaga in the south of Spain. That's super cool. I'm jealous. <laughs> that's the beauty of europe you got so many different you know that's the beauty of the world there yeah i i always think everything is diff you know there is no good there is no right or wrong everything is different and that's the mm -hmm. beauty of it so much to learn yeah steve is talking about italy and and immersing into wine yeah yeah i mean <laughs> You won't remember much about the language, but no. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Oh, man. Let us know in the chat, how many languages do you speak? Let's see if we have like a little contest. Oh, Laura also lived in Spain during uni. Where about? I was in Malaga. Let us know where, let me know, Laura, where you were and let us know if you have different, different 
uh, languages here in the chat. Usually the community is super, super international. So mm -hmm. I'm really excited. And what? We got 15 minutes left before we're oh, done. Man. Shoot, I'm, not, I'm nowhere near done. <laughs> we got tomorrow as well, okay. so don't worry at all. <laughs> Perhaps what, what, what I'm going to ask you to do in a little bit um, yeah. is to do like a little recap, but like keep going for okay. now. I'll give you like a shout when we're like, or maybe Paco can give us a shout uh -huh. from behind the scene when we're like five minutes before saying goodbye. And okay. um, we do like a little recap for, for everything that you've created today. Gotcha. Bruce is saying, I'm not sure I was around, but did you do graffiti? Bruce, I don't, who's that question for? I'm sorry, I'm lost. And maybe tomorrow I'll show you a little bit of my, my hidden folder. I used to have a, yeah. a Behance uh -huh. pro project, Andres, with all like huh. my graffiti piece, it, piece. Yeah. and I was like, and now it's like a, a hidden draft folder. Uh -huh. I don't have it out there anymore, but I feel like I should have. Uh, let it breathe and keep it out. Yeah. I'll be open to seeing it. <laughs> Misty. My mother-in-law speaks Russian, Portuguese, English, Spanish, and a little Chinese. My jaw just dropped. Not only different languages, but different like alphabets as well. Yeah. We have Portuguese in the chat. Zeka, Portuguese, and I can get around with English. Omicron, French, Spanish deteriorated to the basics. <laughs> Steve, I know you speak Italian. So Steve is here very often during the Adobe Lives. Um, huh? and during the um dcc that they create the creative challenges and the shows yeah. and we we always do a little italian like greetings like ciao oh, okay. buongiorno come stai uh -huh. <laughs> we do a yeah. little little italian so i know uh -huh. Steve, that you speak italian <laughs> and also um zero zero point 25 spanish due to listening to a great okay. band called los lobos from los mexico lobos, yeah <laughs> Do you know them, Andre? Yeah, I know those levels, yeah. They have, what's that one? I only know their most popular song and I'm already forgetting it. But yeah, I think. I can dance if you want to, <laughs> if you want to sing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't sing to save my life. <laughs> All right. So Misty, it looks like your mother-in-law is the winner so far. Russian, Portuguese, Spanish, and little Chinese. Amazing. Oh, 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 I spoke too soon. Omicron came with Dutch, Thai, English, bit of German and Korean. Omicron, I think that you are um, the winner. That was the grandparents or who was that? I didn't catch that. Sorry? Who, who, who spoke all those languages? Umacron. I hope that Umacron. I pronounce his name uh, correctly. Man. And I apologize if I don't. I'm, I'm very good at butchering names and making up words. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I believe it's a she. Um, I'm so sorry if I butcher names. I apologize. But the super cool thing is that we have um, Dutch, Thai, English, German, and Korean that I'm jealous. That's my brain can barely contains what I know. <laughs> like, my art disc is like, you know, uh, full. <laughs> oh, I love that. So we have a comment from Steve say, I know RB speaks several languages and RB is a, a fellow viewer of Adobe Live, which is not here, but that we have a family. Not only like we and got here together, Andrew is so much yeah. uh, talking about like life and uh, fun things like we're doing today. Yeah. That to the point that like 
people know what other people do and know in languages, you know? So we got Steve yeah. letting us know about our B that is probably uh-huh. busy right now because our B is not here today. Yeah. But he's vouching for him, saying, hey, my friend RB speaks several languages. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Super cool. Yeah, it's cool. We are a family. And then uh, these Adobe live streams are, they happen twice a week or how many times a week? Adobe live is live pretty much every day, all day. Oh, every day. Okay. We, yeah. The Adobe live also streams from Australia. Okay. Um, uh, I think like uh, during the weekend are the, mm-hmm. is the only time where there are no lives. Although yeah. um, uh, on Behance, you can find stream by yeah. the main account, which is the, the Adobe live mainstream. And also there are so many other streamer that st- stream independently. Yeah. So it's literally 24 seven because um, the artists that have access to the stream mm-hmm. uh, can stream anytime that they want. They have their own schedule. Uh, there are so many amazing people. Yeah. Also many moderators that are here. Uh, Val, I don't know if you actually stream independently on Behance, mm-hmm. um, uh, but I know that that other mentor do stream independently, mm-hmm. um, which is super cool. So there is always content going on here on Behance. And um, that's a fantastic way to actually uh, say a little bit more about what's coming up. Because yeah. after us, uh, there is a, a Creative Encore daily challenge with the lovely Andreas Epi in, sorry, Andrea Epi in XD, oh. followed by uh, Draw Along with Kyle Webster. I don't know if you ever used any of Kyle's uh, brushes, but mm-hmm. Kyle Webster, um, did you ever, have you ever heard of? Of Kyle. Oh, Kyle, no. Kyle is an uh, amazing artist. He created thousands, thousands of brushes that are available for free. Oh. Um, and he's also an Adobe evangelist. Oh. And uh, he's going to be later on today with his show here on Adobe Live called Draw Along. And tomorrow, the show is back with Photoshop uh, with Jeff Chan and then a rework it with me and Asus Ramirez and Vuruval with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, more Lightroom, Illustrator, and we're gonna be back also with Andres with InDesign yeah. and Photoshop. So the fun never stops. And also tomorrow, we're gonna have the artist spotlight. So uh, we're gonna uh, give some space towards the end of the mm. stream to one of um, amazing artists that share their work on Behance. Mm. And it's not really a critique, it's just literally like what we've done throughout the stream, Andres, you've okay. been, so so generous with your time sharing and showing um so many other artists and tomorrow is we're gonna have like a little bit more of a dedicated space uh, which is called the artist spotlight uh so yeah adobe live is always sharing content on behance and by the way if you join late you can watch the replay so this is going to be um available as a replay on um on on behance and also on youtube okay i'm curious what's your favorite spread buddy and what spread do you think we need to fix we what's got my favorite this spread one. yeah from the one Comp- you created so this one we have um this one. Oh, do we have time for a poll? We have, oh, I feel like we're a little big. tight in time. Let I know. See. Uh, Val, Val, let me know if you're if you're ready. If you're ready, we can do like a very last minute poll. We can close it with a poll. <laughs> so late. Um, I think we got like three minutes, three four minutes left. Maybe yeah. we can do it. I'm gonna see what Val says in the chat. Uh, if not, we can do it tomorrow. But okay. in the meantime. Ah, uh, let's let's go back. I'm looking. Oh, I love the one. I love the one with the like. Oh, this I like so this hard. one a lot. This one's my favorite right now. Which one? Uh, the one I have right now on the screen. Um. Okay. Obviously, these all have to be adjusted, but as far as like how I, how they feel, I like this one. I think my favorite one is the one with the uh, black and white on the left, like the the, the very oh, small detail. This one. Yeah. This one. Yeah. And yeah. this one actually needs to be adjusted. Yeah. 
yeah we'll probably give like a little bit of hierarchy on the text or like some yeah. different weights but i, I really love say. that detail <laughs> laura said we can be very quick <laughs> <laughs> laura we'll see if not we're here tomorrow we're gonna do i think as maybe we can start tomorrow oh val is yeah. saying yeah let's do this let's do this okay so okay. let's 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 do this let's show let's show like let's speak I don't know three or four so we can tell people oh, this okay. is number one number two number three and then let's do let's do like a last poll last minute okay. poll okay, okay. so this you is tell number us one address. right here this is gonna be number one i don't even like to big number one can i or no is it working yes okay. that's so helpful All right, this is number one right here. I don't know if you can see it. Yep. Brilliant. Number one. This be, oh shoot, here we go. I'm black. What's going on? Number two. Number two. And we'll just do three. We'll just do three. Yeah. To make it easier. Brilliant. This one, this one, and this one. Right. So please vote for your spread. Which one is your favorite spread? We're going to start tomorrow, maybe by tweaking your favorite spread. Um, that's the one that we're going to start by looking at tomorrow. So let us know in the poll. I know that Val is doing like super fast creating it. It's going to appear in the chat very soon on behance.net slash live. Check the chat and click on the link and vote your favorite spread. Um, I'm going to let you know, Andres, as soon as the poll is out, just to yep. go through again, the one, two, three. Okay. And oh, please, there. We're really, yay, there, Val, you are amazing. So let's do this again. That's number one. And then we got number two. Two and three. Go vote. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to vote as well, because now my favorite is not there. So I got to pick let's another see. one. <laughs> See if you guess which one I'll, I'll pick, Andres. Let me see. Okay. 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 Ooh, ooh, my fave is winning. Ooh. <laughs> How could I? Could I see the poll or no? I can't see it. I don't know if you have a. If you have access to, um, if you can, if you can see the chat, if you mm. have your. Um, I can I can save the link for you. I can save the link for you and Let's then see. and then share it with you. No, I can't. But at the moment we got two runner ups. Oh, maybe if I hit chat. Are you sending subliminal messages, Andreas? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got my faith. <laughs> you got my faith. Yeah, I'm gonna leave right here. Super cool. In the meanwhile, in the meantime, like before we say goodbye, because I know that like we got literally two minutes and I'm yeah. going to give like everybody. Um, do you just want to like share everything like the the, the other one yeah. as well, just to to show the rest of the of the work that we have done? Yeah. And in the meantime, everybody is voting and it's almost time to say goodbye and in the meantime while everybody votes i want to I'm, I'm, I'm super excited today was an amazing stream i want to remind everybody that we uh that there is more adobe live here so stay tuned once we're going to be off there is going to be adobe xd daily creative challenge but i'm ready to reveal the winner of the last poll so we got a few of these these are this is everything we have we got this one this one, this one, this page, and then the first three. Okay, last refresh. 10 seconds, submit your vote. I'm gonna refresh it right now. Boom. So we have the number three winning with 61% of vote. Then we have number one with 22 and then number two with 17. So right. Andres, your subliminal message worked once yeah. more. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to do it. Yeah. 
Wonderful. And if you want to share your Behance profile one more time before we say goodbye for today. Another hands right here. Yeah. Go and give Andres a follow and look at your and, and his work. Tomorrow we're going to uh, do more Photoshop, more refine the, the spreads and um, we still a little bit of animation and mm -hmm. anything else you want to add, Andres, before we say bye? No, that's it. I mean, y'all were amazing. Y'all helped me out. <laughs> We had so much fun. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We're going to be back at it tomorrow with Andres and stay tuned for the XD Creative Challenge here mm -hmm. on Adobe Live. Thank you so much, everybody. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, Andres. Thank you.